Now, before we begin our next story, I want you to look at some visuals. They're from 2020. When hospitals in the United Kingdom faced a tsunami of coronavirus cases. Watch this. You saw that. Overwhelmed hospitals, ICUs filled to the brim. Patients grasping for breath and health facilities in a mess. This was the state of the United Kingdom in 2020, a year that inflicted incomparable devastation on British citizens, but not on the country's politicians. You may remember this, when Britons were fighting for their lives, the country's politicians were rejoicing at their homes. This included the former Prime Minister Boris Johnson. He was pictured drinking and reveling at 10D, breaking all pandemic rules imposed by his own government. It's barely been a few months since those revelations were made and another controversy has gripped the Conservative Party. A controversy surrounding face masks and PPE contracts. A controversy that has ignited further scrutiny of the Tories. Who's to blame for this? Michelle Mohn, a.k.a. Baroness Mohn. Who is she? A British businesswoman and conservative peer, a noble rank awarded to influential figures. Unfortunately, Mohn hasn't really lived up to this honour. Allow me to explain. You see, in 2020, a host of firms sold face masks to the British government, as did PPE Medpro, a firm linked to Michelle Mohn herself. Only that this firm sold masks for double the money this is according to new documents that have been leaked to the British media. They say that face masks supplied by the firm linked to Baroness Mohn were bought by authorities for more than twice as much as the identical ones. Let me break it down for you and bring you some numbers. During the pandemic, the UK's Department of Health struck an £80 million contract with this company, PPE Medro. Under this contract, the firm was supposed to supply face masks to the government, so how much did it charge for them? 38.5 pence each for one mask. And this is where things get interesting. The leaked data shows that masks made by this firm were provided by other suppliers for as little as 14.5 pence. In other words, the firm pulled off a scam. It sold the mask at one price to certain suppliers and another price to the Department of Health. And then you have a firm called Brandology, which supplied the same mask for 14.5 pence apiece. Another firm called Blue Leaf supplied the same mask for 20 pence apiece. But the firm linked to Baroness Mohn supplied them for much more, for 38.5 pence apiece. The question is why? And the answer, Baroness Mohn's political connections. The report says Michelle Mohn lobbied for the firm. To help it secure government contracts, she recommended the firm to lawmakers like Michael Gov, then a cabinet office minister, and Lord Agnew of Ulton, a minister for procurement. Once the firm got the contract and started selling the masks, profits worth millions of pounds were then transferred to a secret offshore trust. A trust whose beneficiaries were Mohan's husband and their adult children. Do you know how much they earned in these profits? A colossal 29 million pounds. Mohan's family received it through a series of offshore accounts, trusts and companies. These revelations have ignited a firestorm in British politics, the Labour Party says, and is accusing the government of a cover-up. Here's what the deputy Labour leader, Angela Rayner, said last night. Allow me to quote. It is time for the government to end the cover-up and commit to publishing these documents relating to the award and performance of these contracts. That's not all. Questions are being asked of Britain's bureaucracy as well, of civil servants who might have ignored the scam. They're being asked, why did suppliers with political connections get the highest prices? At whose behest did the Department of Health agree to pay double for face masks? 
What about Michelle Mohn? Has she said something about this? Well, she says she doesn't want to, but her lawyer has said that there's a lot of inaccuracy in the way the facts are being portrayed. He didn't specify what exactly. In any case, the controversy is expected to get bigger and it threatens to embroil the Prime Minister too, Rishi Sunak. A leader who has pledged to make integrity and accountability pillars of his leadership. We wonder if he is going to hold his own party leader accountable. Last we checked, he was being told to withdraw Tory support from Michelle Mohn. David Cameron has also been dragged into this mess. Why? Simply because it was Cameron who appointed Mohn as a Tory peer. A petition calling for her removal has also been initiated and last we checked, it had received more than 146,000 signatures. This petition calls for Mohn's expulsion from the House of Lords. There's no saying if the Lords would actually do this. I say this. Because Michelle Mohn is deeply ingrained in the Conservative Party, the former owner of a lingerie business. She has proven to be one of the party's most controversial peers, yet deeply connected. In 2021, she was accused of sending racist and abusive messages to a man of Indian heritage. She had apparently called him a quote-unquote waste of a man's white skin. The Conservative Party chose to ignore these messages and now we know why. Because of her political connection, she has been in the House of Lords for seven years, but has only spoken a total of six times and submitted just 22 written questions. But despite all this, she has managed to keep her peerage intact and avoid the many controversies surrounding her. But this one's different because this time, Moan finds herself accused of trying to exploit a tragedy, of trying to mint money through people suffering from a luxury brand owner to appear in the House of Lords, to now a scam-accused public figure. It's a classic tale of a success story gone wrong. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.